Hi! Welcome back to Getting Stitchy. This is going to be part of the ongoing series that I'm doing on the Brother PQ 1500 sewing machine. Today, I'm going to show you how to adjust the stitch length, how to adjust the presser foot pressure, and also how to adjust your feed dogs. So stick around and learn some more about the Brother PQ 1500. I'm going to show how to adjust some of the things on this machine. This dial right here, this is the stitch length. Right now it's set to a two. I believe these are by the millimeter, so this is probably two millimeters. A lot of times I stitch at either a two and a half or a three. I've been, in, I've been working some things where I'm making long strips and I'm using specialty rulers to cut those down into triangular shapes so I can set them together. So whenever you do that, you always want to have your stitch length lower. But for a lot of regular block sewing, I might do a two and a half or a three. You can go up to four and that's kind of like sort of halfway between like a regular stitch and basting. Five is definitely when you're getting into basting. And these are just longer stitches. I don't really use them because I find when it gets that far apart on my stitching, the fabric can kind of bunch. And that's very possible on the basting stitch too. That's just one of the things when your stitches get further, you can have a tendency towards that. The second dial that I want to cover is this dial. And this right here, there's four different settings. This is for adjusting the feed dogs. And the feed dogs are these little teeth that are in the plate here. And the feed dogs are what makes it so that when whatever you're working on, your two pieces of fabric or say a quilt sandwich and maybe you're doing basting on a quilt top, something like that, it makes it so that when this foot is pressing down into the plate of the machine here, these feed dogs make it so that it progresses. So they, what they'll do is when this is up, because it's a hopping foot, when this is hopped up a little bit, these feed dogs will go down, and then when this hopping kind of foot is pressing down, and that's when you're going to have your needle down in there to capture the thread with the bobbin, then at that point, they will come together and these little feed dogs will actually carry your project along. And that's how you end up, uh, depending on your stitch length, that's how far the feed dogs are carrying your particular piece of fabric, couple pieces of fabric, etc. that you might have stitching in your machine. So the way to control that, this right here is the feed dogs are all the way up. So you can see that these little triangles these little triangles here are representing the teeth of the feed dogs. This little horizontal line here is representing the surface here. And so you can see that those little teeth are sticking up above the horizontal line. And most of the time, I am using either this one or I'm using this one at the top. These other two are for different types of fabrics, and that's particularly going to be useful if you are stitching different sorts of fabrics for clothing, possibly for upholstery as well. I don't really have a lot of experience in that. And so this one, the feed dogs are still sticking up slightly, so they will still carry the piece along, but it's a lot closer to the top. This one is about the same as this one, but then it has this little pen feature. And what the pen does, it's this little tiny pin that sticks up and it actually sticks into the two pieces of fabric. It's what is called pen feeding. And that's the sort of thing like if you have slippery fabric, if you're sewing scarves, something like that, I believe that's when you use sewing chiffon. And then this one is the feed dogs are all the way down and you can see that there's even just tiny bit of space between those little triangle icons for the feed dogs and the horizontal. And so it's just simply a matter of clicking that all the way over. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna show what that looks like on the plate here, up close. So here's a close up of that plate area. And these right here, these are the feed dogs, right here. So that area right there, that's the feed dogs. And then, right now the feed dogs are up, like this little seam ripper I have here is actually scraping against that because they're up. This is what happens when I adjust that dial. See, look at that, it's like they disappeared. And I take that over here, I'm not scraping against anything except for the plate. 
And that is the uh, adjusting of the feed dogs. And this will make it so that whenever I am doing free motion work, I can take my piece and I can go back and forth. Now some people are able to do free motion work with the feed dogs up. I've even done that a little bit myself, but it's causing extra friction and in my view anything that makes it so that you can make it as friction free as possible makes it for a much better free motion experience in my opinion. But some people do the feed dogs up because they feel like it gives them a little bit more control and it might. I mean in the cases where you don't have a stitch regulator and there is no stitch regulator on this machine, it might be useful. And then the final dial to adjust is this dial right here. This is for the presser foot pressure. And you can see the little icon for the foot. So if you notice, there's colors here, okay? And then remember, we had colors over here on the feed dog. These colors are suggestive of what these colors are going to be. In the case of having the feed dogs all the way up, there's the suggestion where that's actually the heaviest amount of pressure you can apply. I generally keep it in kind of this little periwinkle zone for my own personal taste, and I find that that's usually enough. When it comes to doing bindings, and especially when you're coming up on the corners, and by the way, this is a wonderful machine for doing bindings. This machine is extremely good at doing bindings. I have come across people who own quilt stores, and they have a machine just like this to do their bindings. When it comes to doing bindings, you actually want to have a little bit more pressure on it, and that way it just keeps it going through. But you might also lighten the pressure up a little bit just because of all your all your different layers that come together, particularly in the corners. So the way you adjust that, because right now I have it set where it's more like those feed dogs are up, and I want to actually take the pressure off. So what I do is I just turn that counterclockwise. And I find that that is enough. Having it in this area is enough. It takes enough of the pressure off to where I can do my free motion work. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is if you have forgotten to adjust this and you took your feed dog all the way back up again and you shifted back to the regular straight stitch foot, you might find that you start getting waviness in your seams, especially when you're going at like, like high speed. You know, slow speed, it may not matter as much, but high speed definitely matters. And in that case, if you still haven't figured it out, if you've tried like maybe stitching on paper and it's still just messing up on you, then take a look at this. Take a look at the presser foot pressure because there, if you didn't adjust that all the way back down into an appropriate range for your straight stitch feeding foot, that you put back on there, you're gonna have problems. So that's just a little tip if you come into something where you have to troubleshoot.